You know, in France, we have a saying that dogs that bark don't bite. So we'll see who bites the most. At the moment, he seems untouchable, but you're not. He's unbeatable at the minute, isn't he? He's hard to beat. And you know that he's such a strong swimmer, so he's always going to be there. He's super strong on the bike. And then the run, if he's there, he just pulls away. When he goes on the sprint, no one can stay with that. So it's hard to beat him. I wouldn't want to be the guys right now because they've got to try and figure out how they're going to beat him. It certainly is a golden age for France in terms of triathlon as we head towards Tokyo 2020, of course. I think he definitely could win an Olympic Games. Like, he's got that character in him. You can kind of see that will to work hard, and he's been quite patient when it's come to the Olympic Games as well. So he's definitely hungry for it. He's got kind of all of the components to go and win that race. So I, I would quite like to see him win. Vincent Lewis continue on his winning ways here in Malta. Yeah, I love his attitude. I love his, I love the way he's going about his business to try to become, well, he is the best in the world. Two years running, you know, didn't he race four times in 2020 and he won every single one? That's, that's class, you know. Is he an Olympic favourite? Absolutely. Is he ready for being a favourite? Absolutely. I've got a lot of time for him, I really do. As a triathlete, one of the best swimmers, super strong on the bike, super strong on the run and has a, a sprint finish that is just, you know, at the moment, we haven't seen it beaten yet. He's been the most dominant athlete in the entire league. But he has everything going for him. If he's got any problem in the sport, it's because there are such good competition. Um, the likes of uh, the Norwegians, Gustav Eid and Christian Blumenfeld, there's, there's two guys there just picking two, two names from one country who have absolutely no fear of anybody. If you ask them how are they going to beat him, they'll go, of course we're going to beat him. Yeah, Vance on Louis, absolutely the favourite, but I would not go engraving on the back just yet. Being suits me well, no? <laughs> okay. I think that the Olympics is the event that all athletes want. Whatever they say going into that race, that it doesn't matter. It does matter, and it will matter to to Vince, having been one of the most dominant triathletes, certainly over the last few years. I think that whilst he might say it's not important a medal, you know, it is really important to him. And he will wake up on the morning of the 26th of July and hope by the end of the day that he has an Olympic medal round his neck. And if it's gold, all the better. Hey Joel, yeah, I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, if you have a time and, and we can we can talk on the last on the last session. I don't know, I felt like a, a little like pain on my left calf. That was weird, and um, I had a, I had the same feeling a week ago, but then now it's uh, it's back and it's really like uh, peaking. So I, I don't know, maybe I should um, with leads coming, I should uh, yeah maybe do an MRI or something and, and maybe not taking risks with the Olympics coming. I don't know, just. Um, yeah, you just you just call me back when you have time, and we can uh, we can we can chat what we can do, and, uh, and just uh, yeah make a move and take a decision. All right, see you soon. Bye. Well, look, for triathletes, avoiding injury is is everything. This this. There's the obsessive nature of being a triathlete because of the, the sheer volume of work that you have to do to be competitive across three disciplines, is is enormous, and it's keeping that body together that's that's hard and. And where I was saying earlier about Vincent being an older athlete and, and yet so powerful at this, at this short course racing, why that's an enigma is most athletes, when you're looking to find speed, break down in their 30s because it's, you're asking the body to do so much across three disciplines that breaks and cracks start to happen. Sort of age, you know, youth forgives what age punishes to some degree. And you can get away with, with making mistakes as a youngster, but when you start to move in your 30s, you better, be, you better be dialed in on, on getting that training right because breaking down and getting injuries is very, very common. The, the name of the game is to arrive in Tokyo ready to win the event, and Vincent knows that. So Vincent needs to arrive there in one piece. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but bah, la, la séance après, euh, en fait, je suis revenu de Yokohama et je pense que j'ai un peu euh, forcé. J'ai un peu forcé, et ouais. T'as bien coup, vu euh, et tout Ouais, ouais, ouais. Mais je sais pas, tu vois, ça m'a fait vraiment comme une, une douleur bien aiguë, tu vois. Et euh, ouais, là. Ah ouais, pff. ouais. Il faut faire attention et, euh, 
Ouais, faut peut-être aller quand même jeter un coup d'œil et écho ou choses comme ça. Hein. Ouais, 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 je pense que je vais vérifier parce que ça m'a. Ça m'a quand même bien fait mal d'un coup, tu vois. Et ouais. là, c'est chaud un peu pour marcher chez des douleurs. So for the past two months, uh, Vince's life has been quite, let's say, not an easy period to, uh, to manage because straight after uh, Yokohama uh, WTS, uh, Vince has been, uh, has been injured. We did not really know if it was a, a bad injury, but it was an injury in the calf. And, you know, for a strong runner like uh, Vince is, you know, it's always difficult to manage this, uh, this kind of injury. So he really had to stop running uh, for quite a long period of time, which, you know, none of his uh, competitor and uh, media and even no, almost no one knows about that, uh, that injury, which was um, quite a tricky one because before Yoko, he was in a super, super great shape. He was really focused on his, uh, on his goal to be really good in the WTS because he's fighting for the world title, but also focusing on, um, on the Olympics. We're all sad to hear about that injury, but uh, Vince is so strong that you know, he did not want to, uh, to, to make uh, the people around feel that you know, he was not going good because I think he was really motivated and he was still confident. But at that level, you know, missing one month of real specific uh, running training, yeah, it's a huge disadvantage uh, when you see the, the killer uh, on the run that are competing against, uh, against him. So that was, that was really a tricky one. As their parents, we were concerned a bit because uh, we we are a bit on the social media also, and uh, as everybody had said, we noticed that uh, Vincent was uh, starting to not be on the pictures uh, that the others from his group are sharing. So, and Jose said it uh, is not communicating a lot when uh, there's something wrong. So we were starting to ask questions. So I've decided already, like, prior to the games, to have a, uh, like, blackout on social media and everything. It wasn't related really to injuries, but, like, regarding social media, that was, that's something I decided. I just wanted to be quiet and, and, and don't be, like, don't have any, like, parasite things on the side that, that like, disturb me from being training and doing everything I, I could. But, yeah, obviously, I'm someone that, when I got something wrong, I rather don't really talk about it, just like leave it on the side as, as long as it stays around and then when it's gone, it's gone. But like, I'm not someone that want to talk about something. I don't feel better when I talk about something. I just, if I don't think about it, if I don't talk about it, I can easily forget about it. But uh, yeah, I'm not someone that's gonna sit and talk to someone, yeah, I think this, I think that. No, I'm just, I'm just someone that moves forward, move on. And uh, I was just like, okay, this thing's gonna take four weeks. Handle it for four weeks. It's not gonna be easy, but in four weeks you're back and you're good. I was just like, now you focus on the rehab and do everything you can to be back and healthy and ready on the start line. Triathlon is composed of three disciplines, swimming, biking and running. And the Olympic distance format is a swim over 1,500 metres of swimming, which is the longest swim discipline at the Olympics, when you look at swim as an individual sport. 40 kilometres of bike riding, which is the longest track distance for cyclists at the Olympics. And 10 kilometres worth of running, which is the longest running distance on the track for runners. That formed the Olympic distance, and that is what Vincent Louis is racing in Tokyo. We don't know a lot about what Vince is up to at the moment. We know he chose not to race Leeds. He sat out of that. We're presuming because of potentially a niggle or something going on in his body, we keep our fingers crossed for Vince that he's in great shape, that he hasn't picked up an injury like he did prior to Rio. Um, he's still got time. Um, only time will tell. <laughs> This is a poster made by the, the neighbor uh, because she's teacher and uh, she has a class of small child and they've prepared this for Vincent. 
Uh, so they've done that at school and uh, basically they've done very well. And in the back, uh, there's a picture of the class and uh, all the kids did sign the, the poster for this. So it's a nice gift from, from the school. Wow. So here we go. This is the big one. We've been waiting five years, the men's Olympic final. Yeah. The, the journey to the Olympics was, uh, was a difficult one, but, uh, but Vince knows how to manage it. It's a blistering pace, but noticeably there's something wrong with Vince. Is that injury holding him back? He tried, he was not there uh, to, to compete and to bring back a medal at home, but he was there to, to make gold. And across the line for a disappointing 13th place, Vincent Lewis. You know, his position doing 13th, it's a failure for a lot of people. It's a big failure for uh, Vince, but for most of the people that know him by heart, know that, you know, he made everything he had to do. He bounced back because the, of the relay. The French come home in bronze medal position after an incredible leg from Vince Lewis. This is the first ever triathlon Olympic medal from the French. They've made history. He has no regret on that race, but again, he was looking for gold. So it's a disappointment. But again, for me, knowing the whole story and seeing Vince pushing, fighting like this, I'm sure that the best is to come, definitely. Today we're back from Tokyo. Uh, we landed at 3.30 a.m. after like an overnight flight from Tokyo to Paris. And then we drove to a hotel uh, next to the Eiffel Tower when we can just like sit down at breakfast. And then we had to proceed to uh, doing a few media, showing the medal around. We went to Eurosport and all these French media. Then afterwards we went to the Trocadero. It's a really famous place next to the Eiffel Tower where they had all the fans waiting and uh, just to show the medal to everyone, taking pictures, uh, answering more interviews and just having some uh, crowd feeling that we couldn't get in, uh, in Tokyo. So that was good to actually see the people that followed us 10,000 kilometers away from Japan. Uh, in front of us and cheering for us. So that was a uh, yeah, that was a great moment. Il est resté en mûrir. Puis parle-nous un peu de ce ce par équipe parce que c'était aussi l'objectif comme le disait Cassandre de cette équipe de France de ramener cette première médaille du triathlon. Euh c'est vrai comme euh, en tant que voilà triple triple champion du monde en titre, on est arrivé avec avec la grosse pancarte euh, mes collègues avaient gagné le test event en 2019. Donc euh, on était on était vraiment l'équipe à l'équipe à abattre. On a pris le on a pris parti pris de de courir en décalé par rapport aux autres équipes. Je pense que si c'était à refaire, on ferait, on referait la même chose. Maintenant, euh, comme, euh, comme on dit au jeu, il faut que la pièce elle tombe du bon côté. Pour nous, ça n'a pas, ça a pas fonctionné, donc euh, on, on ramène une médaille quand même. C'est ce qu'on voulait faire. Comme vous l'avez dit, c'est la première médaille du triathlon français en, chez, chez les valides. Donc c'est voilà, on, on en est vraiment fier de cette médaille, mais euh, d'un côté, je pense qu'elle nous a aussi donné très faim pour pendant trois ans. Obviously, before the races, I was looking forward to showing a gold medal around, but it's not the case. Beforehand, I just don't feel it's something useful. I just always think like nobody will be there and it's going to be just a waste of time. But then you just see the smile of the people, the smile of the kids when they can just like carry the medal and, and touch it and everything. So it's nice for people to actually see the, the athletes and, and, and feel a bit of the vibes from the Olympics. Next Olympics is, are in three years. It's it's really short, so you you can't you can't just like waste weeks and days of training when you're already like. I mean, a, a month ago I was begging to run and I couldn't. So now that I can run, I would be I would be stupid not to not to do it. So yeah, I mean there is races coming up. Uh, I'm I'm racing in Montreal soon, and then Edmonton, then all the Super Leagues. Then I'm gonna be racing in France, in Nieva, for the first time in years I can race in France. Even if it's just a county cup, I really wanted to do it. 
and uh, and it's gonna be like short short races, short formats, things I really like. And with Super League, it's always pretty chill. Uh, we all together. We're gonna be on the road for three weeks all together. So it's also gonna be nice to have like everything dialed for you. You don't have to overthink the things. And getting getting away from the Olympics, all the like the commitments you have to do and everything. It's a uh, yeah, it's another like mindset. And uh, and yeah, I better I better make good use of the next uh, three years because they they obviously the last three years of my uh, short distance career. So um, yeah, I just want to enjoy every single day. Uh, just having fun, making what I love to do, and uh, just get out and train, no matter if it rains, if it's sunny or whatever, it's just like doing whatever I want to do and whatever I love to do. And uh, yeah, just making the most of the, these next three years. So you're ready for the rest of the season? Yeah, I'm ready to start racing. It's been a consistent race season, so it'll be nice. We can race back to back, so we don't have to train that much now. We're just racing, so it's good. And um, with Super League coming also, it's going to be nice to be on the road for three weeks and just uh, just racing, not thinking about anything else than uh, just racing. I think in the last year and a half, we've raced, well, I've raced three times. Yeah. Four times. Yeah. So now we're going to have uh, eight weeks of with just six races in it, so it'll be a big change, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just looking forward to racing, also racing shorter distances, a lot more fun. Hopefully we have some redemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Walking around the river, yeah, on the other side, it's lovely, really. Yeah, I haven't seen in the world like that, really. <laughs> uh, Paris, huh? Come on, city of love, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. Sound is good, the mic? Yep. Yep. We leave you. We left we left you at rain. What has happened? Uh <clears throat> I think that was after the Olympics, right? Olympics. Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh I'm feeling better now. <laughs> I mean Olympics are done and uh, that wasn't the Olympics I was hoping for, but with the injury and everything that we we already talked about, that was uh the best I, the best I could do and uh, as soon as I crossed the line I knew um Super League was coming and a few more races back in Canada. Yeah, now I ticked, uh, I ticked a lot of races on my calendar and I'm really looking forward to start this campaign. Very excited about the, the 2021 season. This is, uh, I would say, this is the game changer, pivotal moment for Super League Triathlon. If we have enough traction, if we have enough proof of concept, then we need to go where the people are, where the triathlon fans are. UK, Germany, US. This year's the Super League Triathlon is a, a unique format. We've got four races. We're flying from London to Munich to Jersey and finishing in Malibu, Los Angeles. London is an absolutely remarkable venue. Why? Because of all that we've seen over the last year and a half, because it's one of the richest capitals in the world. It's a tiny venue, but it's going to be dynamic, amazing. How Super League have used that space to put on such an incredible event. When you come somewhere, like when you when you when you arrive somewhere, the hotel, the 
the race venue, everything, you have, you have vibes, you know? You, you feel the things, you're like, and, and in an instant you can almost say, oh, I'm gonna love this race, or I'm, I'm gonna struggle. And yeah, you come here, you see the barriers, and I mean, I basically grew up racing in a parking lot, so I know what it is to like go around barriers and, and, and like touch the barriers with the elbow when you're cornering and all this stuff, I know what it is. And a lot of people are gonna be like, well, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be tough, but my team is gonna benefit from something that's called experience and, and it has no price. That's a big debate about the wetsuit, eh? <laughs> yeah. So um, a wetsuit swim is a massive advantage for a weaker swimmer because it gives you more buoyancy. It really benefits the non-swimmers and swimmers that have lower body fat because they just sink otherwise. But for someone like um, Alex Yi, I'm sure he will wear a wetsuit because he's a little bit weaker in the swim. As Vincent may not, may not want to wear his wetsuit because he's a nice, strong swimmer. He comes out the front. Yeah. So you guys, like, thinking you're low in the wetsuit, like saying you can wear it or you can wear it. I mean, I, I, I look, I, I'm interested to see what happens. What? <laughs> I think for the first round, everyone's going to wear it. Everyone is going yeah, to wear it. Yeah, for sure. Everyone doesn't need to wear a wetsuit. We'll be fine. I think it's all right. I think it's fine. No, honestly, not a problem. No, I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think too. Pathetic. Five, six, seven, eight, or nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think that's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even like, I even think like. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, I think. Oh, yeah. The water is cold. Yeah, it's cold. Right? Yeah. <laughs> In the beginning, I had like a brain freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is cold. But uh, I think if they allow the first one, it's a little less shock for the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we all know Super League is most of the time without wetsuit. And uh, I was quite surprised when they announced that the water was cold and maybe we could use wetsuit. But honestly, it's fine with me. I don't, I don't really mind. Like a lot of people are coming and asking, oh, are you gonna wear the wetsuit? It's only 250 meters or 300 meters, are you gonna wear it? After two years, it's finally here. The sun is out, big crowds are expected, and fast and furious racing is guaranteed today for the first race of the Super League Series here in London. Yeah, back in I Park, huh? I remember the, the pontoon was just here. Transition. And, um, and there was much more people, though. That was, uh, <laughs> that was crazy. Huh? I think they said it was like one million people or something, huh? but uh, that was insane. That was, that was big. And uh, I remember we were, like they called us in the pontoon for the lineup and everything. And, um, at the Olympics, you're not called by uh, by your world ranking, but just by uh, the the pontoon draw or whatever. So with the French, we were already on the pontoon. And then when they called the, the two brothers, well, I remember the noise. Man. That, was, that was crazy. Huh? The ground was shaking. That, and, like, I remember everyone in the pontoon looking at each other and be like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, that was insane. Insane. Huh? Why in disguise? The pressure they had and they delivered. Honestly, respect them huh? because they had their names everywhere. Huh? Pictures on the bus. Everywhere. And, uh, and yeah, they did it. Huh? That, was, that was crazy. 11 years ago. 
make me feeling old. You know, everyone's coming here fresh and excited, but this is also the first race. You're setting your stall up for the whole month of racing. So the athletes have to think about a whole lot more than just swim, bike, run. There are the cobblestones. There's a really technical course. It's also very tight in spots, particularly coming into the transition area. So the athlete's going to have to be super careful not to make mistakes. Everything's tight. It's tight and it's, it's Every, the athletes are kind of on top of each other in the way. The cobble run in London is going to be really interesting for someone like Vincent, who's literally just uh, recovered from an injury. He's going to be a bit scared because he's, he's probably going to feel his, his niggle or his problem out on the course. And cobbles definitely don't help. The thing with Vince is, um, you know, with Super League, he's always been in control. He's always been able to... He, he's never... I don't think he's really used that extra gear. He's really going to be challenged. You know, he's got younger guys, faster guys. He's going to have to have an A game. But I think Vince is old enough now and more experienced to know that. He's coming off the back of an injury. He still walked away with an Olympic medal. You know, we don't... That less, our standards are very high here. You know, we say he hasn't had the year he wanted. But dude, man, when you look back to your grandchildren, I had a terrible year and I won an Olympic medal and potentially won the Super League series. You know, that's the kind of... That's, that's the bar he sets himself. So, you know, I think he'll come here knowing he's got to work for it, but he knows what to do because he's the only guy to wear that pink jersey. Hey, what's the chance? Good. It's good timing. How are you doing? Not bad, thanks. And you? Yeah, good, good. Got space? I'm good. <sighs> Feeling okay? Yeah. Not too bad. It's nice to race these races where yeah. you don't have too much stress, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's looking busy outside. Yeah, yeah there's people, huh? Yeah, yeah. They're here for you, mate, huh? Nah. <laughs> They're here for the racing. <laughs> Walking out to the venue, it's always cool to see the crowd, uh, taking a few pictures and starting to warm up. So yeah, the lineup for this year's Super League is pretty impressive. Uh, we got like two out of the three uh, Olympic medalists with uh, Hayden and, and Alex. Someone like Alex Yi, you know, nine months ago, would we have been talking about him as a contender? No chance. What he did in Leeds, and he backed that up with an Olympic gold and silver medal. I think racing in front of your home crowd is, is extremely, you know, extremely tough. You know, you might have family and friends uh, standing there on the sidelines. You don't want to disappoint them. The star, especially in London, because that's where he's from. So he's going to be very nervous. If he hits London hard and gets that momentum, he could be tough to beat in this series. I, yeah, I've got a lot of time for Alex Yee. Good. Pretty nervous. I guess my first elite race in London, so I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough one. And uh, there's a lot of people out, which is exciting. Like, I'm really chuffed that so many people come out to walk. But yeah, it's also nerve wracking. Trying to stay as relaxed as possible right now. But, uh, it'll be cool. Whatever happens, it'll be cool. So. Few people were like uh, saying, "Oh, no wetsuit, no wetsuit," and, and and then you have like one guy saying, "Ah, oh, I, I want the wetsuit," and another guy say, "Ah, oh, yeah, maybe I want it too." And then when you chat to the people, I mean, a, a few guys were like, "Oh, asking me directly," and I, and I told them, I, "I mean, wearing no wetsuit, but if one person's wearing it, we we all have to wear it. I mean, it's uh, we can't give a guy a free start or a head start or whatever. It's like either nobody or either everyone." Three triathlons back to back. This will be tough racing. We've seen the women break the waters of Canary Wharf without a wetsuit, but it seems the men have mostly decided to suit up. Will that be decisive? Some of them will not be happy. 
the fastest, most exciting and most brutal triathlon on the planet is back. We've got Olympic champions, world champions and a race that will test them all Louis, to the I max. You line up in transition, you went until the race officials clear the venue. It can be a minute or two, but it seems years. If someone says they don't get nervous, they're clearly lying. You're gonna put your body through hell, so you of course got nervous about it. We line up and go down to the pontoon. Uh, I'm trying to visualize my race, stay focused, take a last deep breath. And everything goes quiet. Finally, SLT is back. The 2021 season is underway and into the water they go for the first stage of the Triple Mix. Vincent Lewis, uh, by his own admission, wasn't at his best this year. He had an injury leading up to the Olympic Games uh, and he was one of the favourites coming in, having had a barnstorming end to 2020, where he won every race in 2020. This is definitely stretching out almost similar to the, to the females race with three up the front here with a small bit of a breakaway gap. The guys that uh, kind of start on the right hand side look like they had a good line to the boy there. Who is that on the front? Is that Schomburg? Matty Hauser. Matt Hauser who comes out of the water first. The owner of the fastest mixed team relay splits in history. Out comes Vincent Lewis, arguably the best swimmer in triathlon at the moment. It must have been quick out there to see him come out of the water in fourth. There's a small gap and it's absolute carnage out there. Matt Hauser, the Australian, has been stuck in Australia for quite a long time. And he's got the no, short he's shoot. one of the Scorpions too. And he will get the short shoot, won't he? Out he goes. If he gets the short shoot, which is a shortcut to use on the very final run of this race. When we exceed the water and I was uh, fourth, I think, uh, I was really, really in close contact. And uh, when I jumped on the bike, um, you, had, you had a U-turn maybe after 200 meters on the bike and, and I saw we had a little gap and Hayden wasn't there and, uh, and Alex was even a bit further. So um, I, I knew we, we, had to, we had to push a bit and, and try to have them making an effort and, and to bridge the gap. Come here, they come here, they come. And when they get here this time, Shell, the drama could unfold. It was Hayden Wild, as you said, that used his skill and technique. He was a bit further back in the swim to close on that front group. So great, great attacking, spontaneous racing by Hayden Wild. I should mention a couple of big names that have fallen down a little bit. Alex Yee, we know he loses time in the swim. He's 16 seconds down through that bike. And Mario Mola, 23 seconds down. So he's actually coming second last at the moment, the three-time world champion. There's one more lap to go when they get onto the mountain line. So they finish transition and run past that. That's when the second short shoot will be awarded for stage three. Yeah, Hayden Wild looks committed. He knows he missed that short shoot. He wants one. He needs a short shoot to take on Vincent Louis. So he's going to be aggressive on the bike. I love the way Hayden attacks his racing. He's just so good to watch, so spontaneous, very, very confident, very, very good across the three disciplines and, and probably one of the best runners on form going into this race. I think Hayden bridged after two laps, but uh, then it was just um, about like making sure I don't crash, making sure I stay out of like any trouble and and reach, the, um, and reach the end of the bike uh, like safely. But I did not know about the short shoot. So when, when basically Hayden took off, um, I was behind Johnny and I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, stage one, we don't have to make efforts. We're just gonna catch him um, just before the finish line or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then, uh, and then when we start running, I heard like uh, someone say, oh, then Hayden got the short shoot. I'm like, where was it? Helmet off, and he's gonna get it. Looks good, looks good. 
Hayden Wild does it. He sprints. He looks around and he gives a little fist bump. He knows he's got the short shoot. Kiwis is at the front of this race and looking supreme. Hayden Wild. So I was like a bit confused, but I don't know. I thought the winner of stage one will get a short shoot. So that's why I pushed the run afterwards, and uh, for two reasons, like putting time on Alex and then uh, trying to win the stage. But uh, but then after one lap, like I remember that uh, Hayden got the short shoot already, so I was like, oh, there is no interest anymore to to win the stage, really. They look at each other and they know they're going to do the job, and the two sharks come across the line. That was good. That was good racing. London triple mix. Swim, bike, run, run, bike, swim. How can you finish with a swim? It's absolutely crazy. These types of things, you really need to be on your A game with your with your mind and your and your thinking, and you need to know in what format, what you know, things go. You've seen some athletes putting their running shoes on to go and swim. Because when you're tired, to think is much harder. Remember, there's just two minutes between the stages and these men have to get across the line and prepare everything for the next race in under 120 seconds. And off they go again. This time it's run, bike, swim for the second stage of the triple mix. Super League, not always that kind. Maka to Alex Yi because he just doesn't have the time to run through the field in the same way that he does in Olympic distance. And he will do it right now because this is the, this is the discipline he loves the most. He has to make up some time. And I think he knows this is this is my time, you know. I, I need this is where I can really make it work for me. It's going to be interesting whether this is going to materialise into a break or not. It took me a while to to like get back to the lead because Alex was start full on, and uh, you know when you have to like reach five seconds uh, on on 800 meters, it's not it's not that easy on guys like Alex or Hayden. That's an important gap. You see that gap to Johnny Brownlee, that gap back to sixth position. If this group of five can get established with Yi there, this transition is critical. Alex Yee will get through it. Hayden Wild right there, Jake Burtwistle and Vincent Louis knows the danger of those three men getting any time on him. All right, key transition this one on with the helmet. Yee and Wild and Lewis. That's a big group of five. You can see Hayden Wild again, he'll go to the front. This group of five is a danger group. You've got isolated riders behind that are going to find it very, very difficult to close in on that gap. It's quite interesting to see uh, Hayden Wilds here has got his swim cap on under his helmet already, so he's going to save uh, one or two seconds there when he runs, goes out to, onto, the, onto the swim, off to the spike. Yeah, Vasco's, Vasco's coming up there from the back between the aero bars in the purple here. So a group of ten as they come off and they're going to swim their way home in stage two. Yeah, Vince is first in the water. Velasa and Yi and Sakib would all go together. Oh, Hayden's going to be first. Hayden straight around him, as we yep. said. As Nailed the winning swimmer, put yourself in the position to make the better swimmers have to swim around you. I'm coming from a swimming background, so obviously I want to, I want to like put time on people on the swim, and it's it's even more important when the swim is at the end of the race or in the middle because people are more tired, so they make more mistakes and 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 they swim and they swim like slower. Um, but I also made mistake during this race. I had my cap on, but it took me a while to put my goggles on. And so Hayden dove in front of me and I had to go around him and it's still like a, a little draft for him. So I don't know, I put maybe eight seconds, but it could have been 14 or 15. taken by Alessandro Fabian there and there could be a little bit of a gap created for these two heading into stage three. Now the two of them know that they'll start together so there's no need to sprint for the line other than to create a bigger gap back to Wild who will need to do everything he can to make sure the time doesn't just be too fast. Fabian crosses in fourth from Yi, Alasa one more stage to go and the athletes will be exhausted and this is where mistakes can creep in as we know every second is crucial be on the start line though
And you know, when you're chasing, it's, it's all this different because uh, as soon as you are 20 meters away, you take the draft and, and, then, um, and then you have a goal, you see where people are. And, but uh, we, with Johnny before the race, we, we also say that if Hayden catches, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Uh, but we want him to like, have to work and maybe catch us a bit later. Right, so it's bike first, they've got to run to the bike. They've already got their swimming gear on. It's bike, swim, run. And the staggered start. So, as we said, the time lost in stage one and two is paid for right here. Benson Lewis will go off first. And one second to Jonathan Brownlee. Off they go. Seven seconds wait for Hayden Wild, and he'll go. There he goes in the back. But don't forget, this is the man with the short shoot, isn't it? But these two men at the front, they know Will they be joined by Hayden Wild? They know it's on stage here. They know it. They know they have to keep Hayden Wild off the track. He has not even put his shoes on. There he is at the back there. He started eight seconds or seven seconds in arrears. He's not that far now. He's got a monster bike leg. Moving across. Oh, he is hunting. Here comes the shock. And they know the danger of Hayden Wild possesses with such a big run. They don't want to this race at all. Isolating, making work, it makes a tough day in the office for Hayden Wild. Taylor Reid there oh, also. Wild's got him. He's got on. Wild is on the back. What a Here lap go. by Hayden Wild. What a lap. When Hayden bridged the gap, I was like, well, now, we, now we're going for a fast swim and, and I need to like put all in on the swim. by Vincent Louis now. He knows this is the this is the time you see him come off this first swim boy. He'll get the kick in, accelerate. Johnny will be aware of that and he'll come off that second swim boy again and really open up. We saw that in the last stage and that's where the gap started to open up on Hayden Wild. And, and that distance there is about the short shoot distance from looking it's at it. Five it seconds about, here. Yeah, yeah, it looks about two or three seconds. Out of the water for the last time. 1.6 kilometres to go at London Super League Triathlon. And now it's all about the run home. The short shoot goes to Hayden Wild. But these two men have been a huge force in Super League since its inception. Running shoes on for the last time. That's the slowest transition from Vincent Louis in quite yeah, a while. Lost him a few seconds yeah. there. Difficult underfoot. Here comes the short shoot. Yeah, Hayden is going to have to take it here, I think. When he comes he's through. Yeah, he's going to take here it. He here he goes. Here we go. And Hayden. Now he's going to He's commit. into the lead. Honestly, I thought the short shoot was uh, a bit shorter because visually it, it seems shorter. But the way it was, it's a lot like uh, it's it's a lot easier because you don't really have to U-turn. You go straight and then you go right. So he kept them. He kept the momentum. He had like full speed going out of the corner. And when I went around, I knew he had the short shoot, but I was like. He made a big effort on lap, lap one, and uh, maybe I can maybe I can have him if I'm like 20 meters, 30 meters behind him. It's like a matter of five seconds, and and I feel strong, so I can I can maybe do it. Hayden Wild takes the win. The Falcon flies in London. Vincent Lewis comes home second. He just couldn't bridge that gap. Donny Brown. When you're second, you're second. It doesn't matter if it's one second or ten seconds. It's uh, it's one less point on the on the overall, and that's all that matters. You you're the first loser, and uh, and you know we say we say a winner for a reason because there is one guy that wins the race, and there is 19 others that lost the race. It's it's there's only one gold medal. There is only one guy that wears the pink jersey and and all this stuff. Uh, the short shoot, I, I, it's my fault 100%. I, I had to be like more careful about the rules and everything, and uh, and he played smart 100%. And he was he was really strong too. Huh? I, I I play my cards on the swim and uh, on the swims and on the run every time. But he was uh, yeah he was really strong. So um, I think he deserved that win because uh, I should have been more careful or I should have been stronger, whatever. But um, yeah, anyway, I learned my lesson now. Good race now. Your swimming was. Yeah. Yeah. I knew, I knew that's where we needed to like get the gap if, if he has a short shoot. I was pleased the water was clear, so it's bucket of feet. I was trying not to like kick too much. Yeah. Well, I, every time that's a massive fight with Hayden. 
Oh yeah? Yeah, so yeah. like you catch right, so on the on the the second round, I dove next to him and wow. Yeah. He, like he, he my uh, what an incredible first race here in London and what a start to this month of racing and three more weekends to go. For me, it's an interesting spot right now for Vince Lewis. Not on the top step of the podium and not on top of the standings where he's very used to being. How will he respond? Second is better than third, I guess. Huh? Ah, that was hard, that was tough. Did you disappoint you or? Uh, yeah, 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 of course, but. A um, couple more races, a couple more days, and everything will be fine.